Living in poverty also means not being able to afford a doctor or medical treatment. It means no electricity, limited shelter, and often little to no food on the table. For young children, improper nutrition can mean stunting and wasting that permanently impact their development. In impoverished countries where many people lack access to clean water and sanitation, poverty means the spread of preventable diseases and the unnecessary death of children. Historically, poverty has been calculated based on a person's income and how much he or she can buy with that income, but new multidimensional measures are more holistic. Living in poverty also means not being able to afford a doctor or medical treatment. It means no electricity, limited shelter, and often little to no food on the table. For young children, improper nutrition can mean stunting and wasting that permanently impact their development. In impoverished countries where many people lack access to clean water and sanitation, poverty means the spread of preventable diseases and the unnecessary death of children. Historically, poverty has been calculated based on a person's income and how much he or she can buy with that income, but new multidimensional measures are more holistic. The unique ability of producing their own food through a process called photosynthesis. In this process, plants are able to produce macromolecules such as carbohydrates that cannot be produced in animals or humans. In humans, the only to gain these macromolecules is to consume plant matter, or consume plant-eating animals, herbivores. When humans consume plants, the carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins that are broken down through two forms of cellular respiration. The two processes of cellular respiration displayed in humans are anaerobic or aerobic. The deciding process is depends on the presence of oxygen. The unique ability of producing their own food through a process called photosynthesis. In this process, plants are able to produce macromolecules such as carbohydrates that cannot be produced in animals or humans. In humans, the only to gain these macromolecules is to consume plant matter, or consume plant-eating animals, herbivores. When humans consume plants, the carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins that are broken down through two forms of cellular respiration. The two processes of cellular respiration displayed in humans are anaerobic or aerobic. The deciding process is depends on the presence of oxygen. Travel widens the grasp of our knowledge of geography, different cultures and people, etc. For example, when people of Assam visit South India, they learn a great deal. They come to know about the geographical features of South India, such as the existence of numerous rivers, coconut groves, backwaters, spice gardens, rubber plantations, oceans, seas, factories, cities, etc. They also learn many things about the Dravidian culture which characterize the people's style of living there. They come to know about their mode of living, social life, agriculture, worship, beliefs, art forms, etc. Such a visit is bound to enlighten the visitor and make them more appreciative of other cultures. Travel widens the grasp of our knowledge of geography, different cultures and people, etc. For example, when people of Assam visit South India, they learn a great deal. They come to know about the geographical features of South India, such as the existence of numerous rivers, coconut groves, backwaters, spice gardens, rubber plantations, oceans, seas, factories, cities, etc. They also learn many things about the Dravidian culture which characterize the people's style of living there. They come to know about their mode of living, social life, agriculture, worship, beliefs, art forms, etc. Such a visit is bound to enlighten the visitor and make them more appreciative of other cultures. The biggest feature of organic diet is that they do not have any side effects on the body. No chemical, pesticides, drugs or preservatives have been used in it. It contains essential elements like vitamins, minerals, protein, calcium, iron etc. These are the things that keep the body healthy. Organic food does not contain any kind of chemical, hence it is called healthy food. 
The nutrients present in organic foods prevent heart diseases, blood pressure problems and dangerous diseases like migraine, diabetes and cancer. Its special use strengthens the immunity of the body and does not cause problems such as cold. Since it does not contain fat, due to which it does not increase weight, it improves skin as well as tastes better. The biggest feature of organic diet is that they do not have any side effects on the body. No chemical, pesticides, drugs or preservatives have been used in it. It contains essential elements like vitamins, minerals, protein, calcium, iron etc. These are the things that keep the body healthy. Organic food does not contain any kind of chemical, hence it is called healthy food. The nutrients present in organic foods prevent heart diseases, blood pressure problems and dangerous diseases like migraine, diabetes and cancer. Its special use strengthens the immunity of the body and does not cause problems such as cold. Since it does not contain fat, due to which it does not increase weight, it improves skin as well as tastes better. Efforts to define the nature of an art or craft usually are based upon the masterpieces of that field. Without that necessary reference point, vague speculations and generalizations without proof of validity are likely. In the visual, musical, and literary arts, this foundation exists. The work of the great masters of the past and the present serves not only to elucidate the art but also to create standards to emulate. It is difficult to imagine what the present state of comprehension of music would be if only the music of today were available, and the achievements of Monteverdi, Bach, Beethoven, and Mozart had to be known only by hearsay. Yet, this is precisely the situation that exists in acting. Efforts to define the nature of an art or craft usually are based upon the masterpieces of that field. Without that necessary reference point, Vague speculations and generalizations without proof of validity are likely. In the visual, musical, and literary arts, this foundation exists. The work of the great masters of the past and the present serves not only to elucidate the art but also to create standards to emulate. It is difficult to imagine what the present state of comprehension of music would be if only the music of today were available, and the achievements of Monteverdi, Bach, Beethoven, and Mozart had to be known only by hearsay. Yet, this is precisely the situation that exists in acting. Psychology has saturated practically all fields of human behavior even though it's very new compared to other sciences. Psychology's impact has started to be felt in industries, guidance centers, business, clinics and education, and it is no longer just a subject of academic interests. Depending on their field of specializations, psychologists engage in many things, for example, experimental psychology deals with experimental methods to study human behavior like how an individual reacts to sensory stimuli, learn and remember things and events, or their actions based on the organic needs or due to their desire for status in society. Physiological psychology deals with the relationships between bodily behavior and processes. Psychology has saturated practically all fields of human behavior even though it's very new compared to other sciences. Psychology's impact has started to be felt in industries, guidance centers, business, clinics and education, and it is no longer just a subject of academic interests. Depending on their field of specializations, Psychologists engage in many things, for example, experimental psychology deals with experimental methods to study human behavior like how an individual reacts to sensory stimuli, learn and remember things and events, or their actions based on the organic needs or due to their desire for status in society. Physiological psychology deals with the relationships between bodily behavior and processes. Building designers must bear in mind the construction procedure when making shape, form and material choices, but the choice of one material over another or one technique over the other, while being affected by safety issues should not prevent architectural inventions and the creative thought process. The decisions for material and structural liability in the shape and form are made on the basis of their assembly and cost, simultaneously keeping in mind the safety provisions. The duty of the designer 
contractor or the person ensuring safety should take into account the probability of the hazard, the extent of the harm it may cause, knowledge about the hazard and ways to eradicate or reduce its effects, accessibility to the resources in case of emergency and the assumed costs for rectification. Though the designers alone cannot control the happenings during the construction phase but can manage it well with coordination and cooperation with consultants, contractors and site engineers. A method for the assessment of hazards and risks in a project along with the identification of people responsible and involved at the different stages of building called as the chair is developed. Building designers must bear in mind the construction procedure when making shape, form and material choices, but the choice of one material over another or one technique over the other, while being affected by safety issues should not prevent architectural inventions and the creative thought process. The decisions for material and structural liability in the shape and form are made on the basis of their assembly and cost, simultaneously keeping in mind the safety provisions. The duty of the designer, contractor or the person ensuring safety should take into account the probability of the hazard, the extent of the harm it may cause, knowledge about the hazard and ways to eradicate or reduce its effects, accessibility to the resources in case of emergency and the assumed costs for rectification. Though the designers alone cannot control the happenings during the construction phase but can manage it well with coordination and cooperation with consultants, contractors and site engineers. A method for the assessment of hazards and risks in a project along with the identification of people responsible and involved at the different stages of building called as the chair is developed. Polio, an infectious disease caused by a virus that lives in the throat and intestinal tract, was once the leading cause of disability in the world. Since the introduction of the polio vaccine in 1955, the disease has been eradicated in the world. But the disease is still common in some developing countries and until it is eradicated worldwide, the risk of it spreading to the world still exists. For that reason, the polio vaccination remains one of the recommended childhood immunizations. In most parts of the world polio immunization is required before a child can start school. Polio, an infectious disease caused by a virus that lives in the throat and intestinal tract, was once the leading cause of disability in the world. Since the introduction of the polio vaccine in 1955, the disease has been eradicated in the world. But the disease is still common in some developing countries and until it is eradicated worldwide, the risk of it spreading to the world still exists. For that reason, the polio vaccination remains one of the recommended childhood immunizations. In most parts of the world polio immunization is required before a child can start school. More than the purely medical effects of noise pollution on the individual, there is a significant social and economic impact. Since noise pollution leads to sleep disturbance, it affects the individual's work performance during the day, it leads to hypertension and cardiovascular disease and costs the health system additional time and money, and it negatively affects school performance in children. Children appear to be more sensitive to noise pollution, and a number of noise pollution related diseases and dysfunctions are known to affect children, from hearing impairment to psychological and physical effects. Also, children who regularly use music players at high volumes are at risk of developing hearing dysfunctions. In 2001, it was estimated that 12.5% of American children between the ages of 6 to 19 years had impaired hearing in one or both ears. More than the purely medical effects of noise pollution on the individual, there is a significant social and economic impact. Since noise pollution leads to sleep disturbance, it affects the individual's work performance during the day, it leads to hypertension and cardiovascular disease and costs the health system additional time and money, and it negatively affects school performance in children. Children appear to be more sensitive to noise pollution, and a number of noise pollution related diseases and dysfunctions are known to affect children, from hearing impairment to psychological and physical effects. Also, Children who regularly use music players at high volumes are at risk of developing hearing dysfunctions. In 2001, it was estimated that 12.5% of American children between the ages of 6 to 19 years had impaired hearing in one or both ears.
The changes that winter brings affect people, animals, plants, and trees alike. Trees and plants go dormant to live through the cold and some animals hibernate while other stores up food in the fall to eat during the winter when it gets harder to find food. To learn more, check out our newsletter about hibernation. Some animals adapt to the change in weather by growing a white-colored winter coat of fur to blend in with snow. Many animals eat different foods in the winter than during the rest of the year. Squirrels and mice gather food like nuts and seeds in the fall and save them in their nests to eat in the winter, and others like deer eat twigs and bark when it's hard to find other things to eat. These are ways that animals can adapt to stay alive and active during the coldest times of the year. The sun doesn't shine as warmly on the earth during the winter, even on the brightest days. Trees and plants usually go dormant like they are sleeping or else die so when you look outside, you will see more brown than green. The changes that winter brings affect people, animals, plants, and trees alike. Trees and plants go dormant to live through the cold and some animals hibernate while other stores up food in the fall to eat during the winter when it gets harder to find food. To learn more, check out our newsletter about hibernation. Some animals adapt to the change in weather by growing a white-colored winter coat of fur to blend in with snow. Many animals eat different foods in the winter than during the rest of the year. Squirrels and mice gather food like nuts and seeds in the fall and save them in their nests to eat in the winter, and others like deer eat twigs and bark when it's hard to find other things to eat. These are ways that animals can adapt to stay alive and active during the coldest times of the year. The sun doesn't shine as warmly on the earth during the winter, even on the brightest days. Trees and plants usually go dormant like they are sleeping or else die so when you look outside, you will see more brown than green. Librarians are information experts, selecting books relevant to the community, creating helpful programming, and connecting people to information. Libraries are community hubs. In addition to connecting people to information, libraries connect people to people. They are safe havens for kids when school is not in session, offering after-school homework help, games and book clubs. Libraries offer computer classes. Enabling older adults stay engaged in a digital world. Bookmobiles and community outreach programs keep those living in remote areas or those who are homebound connected to the larger community. Librarians are information experts, selecting books relevant to the community, creating helpful programming, and connecting people to information. Libraries are community hubs. In addition to connecting people to information, Libraries connect people to people. They are safe havens for kids when school is not in session, offering after-school homework help, games and book clubs. Libraries offer computer classes, enabling older adults stay engaged in a digital world. Bookmobiles and community outreach programs keep those living in remote areas or those who are homebound connected to the larger community. Personality development is about building your capacities, nurturing your talent, enhancing new skill sets, working on your weaknesses, and transforming them into strengths. You, as an individual, have unique skill sets. Your potential is multifaceted, and investing in personality development enables you to harness your strengths. Focusing on individual personality development adds to your capabilities and helps your dreams and aspirations turn into a reality. To be a more charismatic person, you have to develop your inner self as well as your outer self. The importance of personality development is undisputed in personal and professional life. There is no substitute for hard work when it comes to personality development. The sooner you understand it, the better for you. Think about how to develop personality, chalk out a plan, set a goal, and work towards it every day. Your personality is not static and unchangeable. You can develop it for the better. Play to your strengths and work on your weaknesses. Personality development is about building your capacities, nurturing your talent, enhancing new skill sets, working on your weaknesses, and transforming them into strengths. You, as an individual, have unique skill sets. Your potential is multifaceted, and investing in personality development enables you to harness your strengths. 
Focusing on individual personality development adds to your capabilities and helps your dreams and aspirations turn into a reality. To be a more charismatic person, you have to develop your inner self as well as your outer self. The importance of personality development is undisputed in personal and professional life. There is no substitute for hard work when it comes to personality development. The sooner you understand it, the better for you. Think about how to develop personality, chalk out a plan, set a goal, and work towards it every day. Your personality is not static and unchangeable. You can develop it for the better. Play to your strengths and work on your weaknesses. Dance, the movement of the body in a rhythmic way, usually to music and within a given space, for the purpose of expressing an idea or emotion, releasing energy, or simply taking delight in the movement itself. Dance is a powerful impulse, but the art of dance is that impulse channeled by skillful performers into something that becomes intensely expressive and that may delight spectators who feel no wish to dance themselves. These two concepts of the art of dance, dance as a powerful impulse and dance as a skillfully choreographed art practiced largely by a professional few are the two most important connecting ideas running through any consideration of the subject. Dance, the movement of the body in a rhythmic way, usually to music and within a given space, for the purpose of expressing an idea or emotion, releasing energy, or simply taking delight in the movement itself. Dance is a powerful impulse. But the art of dance is that impulse channeled by skillful performers into something that becomes intensely expressive and that may delight spectators who feel no wish to dance themselves. These two concepts of the art of dance, dance as a powerful impulse and dance as a skillfully choreographed art practiced largely by a professional few are the two most important connecting ideas running through any consideration of the subject. Cholesterol is a waxy substance. It's not inherently bad, your body needs it to build cells and make vitamins and other hormones. But too much cholesterol can pose a problem. Cholesterol comes from two sources. Your liver makes all the cholesterol you need. The remainder of the cholesterol in your body comes from foods from animals. For example, meat, poultry and dairy products all contain dietary cholesterol. Those same foods are high in saturated and trans fats. These fats cause your liver to make more cholesterol than it otherwise would. For some people, this added production means they go from a normal cholesterol level to one that's unhealthy. Some tropical oils such as palm oil, palm kernel oil and coconut oil contain saturated fat that can increase bad cholesterol. These oils are often found in baked goods. Cholesterol is a waxy substance. It's not inherently bad. Your body needs it to build cells and make vitamins and other hormones. But too much cholesterol can pose a problem. Cholesterol comes from two sources. Your liver makes all the cholesterol you need. The remainder of the cholesterol in your body comes from foods from animals. For example, meat, poultry and dairy products all contain dietary cholesterol. Those same foods are high in saturated and trans fats. These fats cause your liver to make more cholesterol than it otherwise would. For some people, this added production means they go from a normal cholesterol level to one that's unhealthy. Some tropical oils such as palm oil, palm kernel oil and coconut oil contain saturated fat that can increase bad cholesterol. These oils are often found in baked goods. Water pipe tobacco use is damaging to health in similar ways to cigarette tobacco use. However, the health dangers of water pipe tobacco use are often little understood by users. Smokeless tobacco use is highly addictive and damaging to health. Smokeless tobacco contains many cancer-causing toxins and its use increases the risk of cancers of the head, neck, throat, esophagus and oral cavity including cancer of the mouth, tongue, lip and gums as well as various dental diseases. Over 80% of the 1.3 billion tobacco users worldwide live in low- and middle-income countries, where the burden of tobacco-related illness and death is heaviest. Water pipe tobacco use is damaging to health in similar ways to cigarette tobacco use. However, the health dangers of water pipe tobacco use are often little understood by users. 
Smokeless tobacco use is highly addictive and damaging to health. Smokeless tobacco contains many cancer-causing toxins and its use increases the risk of cancers of the head, neck, throat, esophagus and oral cavity including cancer of the mouth, tongue, lip and gums as well as various dental diseases. Over 80% of the 1.3 billion tobacco users worldwide live in low- and middle-income countries, where the burden of tobacco-related illness and death is heaviest. Elon Musk, South African-born American entrepreneur who co-founded the electronic payment firm PayPal and forms SpaceX, maker of launch vehicles and spacecraft. He was also one of the first significant investors in, as well as chief executive officer of, the electric car manufacturer Tesla. Musk was born to a South African father and a Canadian mother. He displayed an early talent for computers and entrepreneurship. At age 12 he created a video game and sold it to a computer magazine. In 1988, after obtaining a Canadian passport, Musk left South Africa because he was unwilling to support apartheid through compulsory military service and because he sought the greater economic opportunities available in the United States. Elon Musk, South African-born American entrepreneur who co-founded the electronic payment firm PayPal and forms SpaceX, maker of launch vehicles and spacecraft. He was also one of the first significant investors in, as well as chief executive officer of, the electric car manufacturer Tesla. Musk was born to a South African father and a Canadian mother. He displayed an early talent for computers and entrepreneurship. At age 12 he created a video game and sold it to a computer magazine. In 1988, after obtaining a Canadian passport, Musk left South Africa because he was unwilling to support apartheid through compulsory military service and because he sought the greater economic opportunities available in the United States. Honey is a sweet liquid made by bees using the nectar from flowers. It is graded by color, with the clear, golden amber honey often fetching a higher retail price than the darker varieties. Both raw and pasteurized forms of honey are available. Raw honey is removed from the hive and bottled directly, and as such will contain trace amounts of yeast, wax, and pollen. Consuming local raw honey is believed to help with seasonal allergies, due to repeated exposure to the pollen in the area. Pasteurized honey has been heated and processed to remove impurities. Honey is a sweet liquid made by bees using the nectar from flowers. It is graded by color, with the clear, golden amber honey often fetching a higher retail price than the darker varieties. Both raw and pasteurized forms of honey are available. Raw honey is removed from the hive and bottled directly, and as such will contain trace amounts of yeast, wax, and pollen. Consuming local raw honey is believed to help with seasonal allergies, due to repeated exposure to the pollen in the area. Pasteurized honey has been heated and processed to remove impurities. Positive thinking is the idea that you can change your life by thinking positively about things. This idea can sound a bit soft and fluffy, which is something of a problem for many people who recognize that just thinking good thoughts won't change the world and therefore discard the whole idea. However, research shows that positive thinking really does have a scientific basis. You can't change the world, but you can change how you perceive it and how you react to it. And that can change the way that you feel about yourself and others, which can in turn have a huge effect on your well-being. People who think more positively are more likely to do things to deliver on those options. They build new skills and develop existing ones, so that they genuinely have more options in life. A positive attitude will probably not cure cancer in itself. But positive thinking will make it easier to manage your life, reduce stress, and also help you to take care of yourself better. And those things are important to help you recover from serious diseases. Finding time to be positive about your life, and to do the things that make you feel positive emotions like happiness, is vital to helping you to develop skills and grow as a person. Positive thinking is the idea that you can change your life by thinking positively about things. This idea can sound a bit soft and fluffy, which is something of a problem for many people who recognize that just thinking good thoughts won't change the world and therefore discard the whole idea. 
However, research shows that positive thinking really does have a scientific basis. You can't change the world, but you can change how you perceive it and how you react to it. And that can change the way that you feel about yourself and others, which can in turn have a huge effect on your well-being. People who think more positively are more likely to do things to deliver on those options. They build new skills and develop existing ones, so that they genuinely have more options in life. A positive attitude will probably not cure cancer in itself. But positive thinking will make it easier to manage your life, reduce stress, and also help you to take care of yourself better. And those things are important to help you recover from serious diseases. Finding time to be positive about your life, and to do the things that make you feel positive emotions like happiness, is vital to helping you to develop skills and grow as a person. There are a certain amount of unreasoning beliefs among people living in a community, arising sometimes from fear, sometimes from helplessness, and sometimes from coincidences. They are called as superstitions. These beliefs have been existing since the creation of first human being. Great number of them are not related with any scientific basis, reason, contemporariness and religious faith. Although they have nothing to do with wisdom and reason, unfortunately they could not be removed and eliminated from heart, brain, conscience of human being. In emerging of such kind of beliefs both natural structure of persons and illiterate words of elderly persons, as well as of some religious officials have been effective. Even if beliefs have shown variation from person to person they have also some common aspects. There are a certain amount of unreasoning beliefs among people living in a community, arising sometimes from fear, sometimes from helplessness, and sometimes from coincidences. They are called as superstitions. These beliefs have been existing since the creation of first human being. Great number of them are not related with any scientific basis, reason, contemporariness and religious faith. Although they have nothing to do with wisdom and reason, unfortunately they could not be removed and eliminated from heart, brain, conscience of human being. In emerging of such kind of beliefs both natural structure of persons and illiterate words of elderly persons, as well as of some religious officials have been effective. Even if beliefs have shown variation from person to person they have also some common aspects. Research is presented to show that video games have been widely applied in education and training scenarios. We then shift our focus to the impact of video games on culture. We explore gaming culture itself and try to show how what was once a niche group of dedicated individuals has spilled out into a global phenomenon. We have also looked at the ramifications of gaming on important cultural issues like race and gender inequality, and social movements such as climate change. Lastly, we briefly discuss the up-and-coming world of esports. In summary, video games are no longer a private activity relegated to a specific group of people. It is now a cultural phenomenon, which is literally changing our society. Video games have proven themselves as a dominant force in our world, and the future ahead is going to be wild ride, packed with new advancements and impactful change on our existence. Research is presented to show that video games have been widely applied in education and training scenarios. We then shift our focus to the impact of video games on culture. We explore gaming culture itself and try to show how what was once a niche group of dedicated individuals has spilled out into a global phenomenon. We have also looked at the ramifications of gaming on important cultural issues like race and gender inequality, and social movements such as climate change. Lastly, we briefly discuss the up-and-coming world of esports. In summary, video games are no longer a private activity relegated to a specific group of people. It is now a cultural phenomenon, which is literally changing our society. Video games have proven themselves as a dominant force in our world, and the future ahead is going to be wild-dried, packed with new advancements and impactful change on our existence.